all right guys what's going on we are live so today is a really great day because this is going to be the first step into our front end development and uh one second let me tilt this camera down just a bit um yeah so today we're going to um start working with angular and uh, i'm really excited because front end development as i said um last week is one of the more what's the word i'm looking for rewarding aspects of the development process just because you get to see the results of what you're doing as opposed to with back end you kind of like uh you know you kind of know but you don't really get to see it you know excuse me um it doesn't really do anything um for the most part you know you can't interact with it things like that you can just say oh hey data's coming you know it doesn't look pretty there's nothing going on there so um before we actually dig into that I just want to check something out over here in Adobe XD reason being is there are some resources that I need to get out of here and uh, it's, it's not being very helpful right now because um, there's an update for it but for I don't know why but it always tells me that I have a version open before um, I can get to it so I'm just gonna try it this way so um, as I mentioned last week, I need to get the background image and I need to get a few other resources from here, like the colors and stuff like that. But um, I don't necessarily have to store the colors because I already have those stored. So let's go in here and see what we can get. Excuse me. So let me see here. let this thing boot up and now uh, these are the colors that we'll be using um, not this blue this blue is actually a hidden color um, that's a color that I've been using for my borders and other things like that so it just helped me get the design in place I won't be using that uh, when we actually go live um, this footer uh, will be consistent across a lot of well pretty much every page is gonna have the footer in it except for I believe the login screen it's going to be a lot simpler. So um, this footer is going to be a component that we're going to create in Angular. And you guys will see more about components. Um, but this is the piece here that I wanted to get. <clears throat> and I'm not sure how I want to grab this. For instance, I'm not sure if I want to make this whole thing a um, resource and then get that. Um, I do know that this design and this text is what I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can get this and I think I want these as well so um, and the thing here is with the text I can actually get the text in there another way so um, I guess I'll leave the text for now I really just need this image and um, the background color uh, yeah I want to make sure I don't have any problems with this so I'm going to just bring these two as one thing and then um, I'll grab this text here because that's going to be standalone. To, and then I'll, I'll start with this and see what happens. Let me see. Is this. Uh, yeah, I want this. I want this. And let's get this background. And I'm on the fence about grabbing this, but I'll grab it anyway. Um, so then let's go ahead and see if we can export this thing. So I think I have to go up here and go to I think this plus does it oh, that's not the one um, it's one of these things I've never done this before so bear with me guys um, it's not web export that I'm looking for if I go to share that's not it either um, let me try home oops nope all right, just drop down. Oh, there we go. Okay, found it. So let's do this again, and let me get out of that share screen. So over here, the stuff that we selected should, well, was, still highlight it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and grab um, our menu, and let's hit export. Select it. So I wonder if this is all gonna come out as one piece or together. Uh, let's see if I do this. I want this to come out as 
So if I do it for web, it gives me 1x, 2x. I really don't know what that means. So I'm going to change this really quick because I don't think that folder exists. And I'm just going to put it in a pictures section for now just so it doesn't get uh, mixed up. And I'm just going to create a folder in here for it. If There we go. I'm just going to say, um, I'm gonna say um, web um, resources. And I'll store them here. And I'll export that. And I don't know if it's going to export them each as one individual thing or it's going to export them all together. So that's really the part that I'm looking for. So let's go into pictures and then let's go um, maybe somewhere else. Oh, here we go. Web resources. Yeah, so they all came out as separate things. Um, let me go ahead and do one thing really quick is I'm going to do a quick Google. And what I'm going to be looking up is um, I, I, so you're going to pull, we're going to be pulling in an image and then we're going to be placing that image over a background. Um, in theory, we should be able to do this and pull the element in and not have any problems. So, uh, actually I'll, I'll just save that for later and that'll be something we'll look into. The only thing we're actually going to need is that picture. So that is fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the process off <clears throat> very simply by going into the terminal and I'm going to do NPM. Um, actually there's a few things we're going to do. So to start this off, we're going to use angular. We have to install angular to make it available for our program. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to go, I'm trying to think of the, um, website. There we go. Angular CLI. So CLI just stands for command line interface. And we're going to use the command line to install this. So this is what we want here. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab this. I'm not going to do it globally. So that's what this dash dash G does. It takes your, um, your install and it applies it everywhere to your computer. And you don't really want to do this because if you would install it globally on your computer, then that means if you, let's say right now we're going to develop this project, right? Um, and we want to do another project. If we do another project, there might be a new version out, excuse me. And then when that new version comes out, if we update to that new version, then when we come back to update an, an older project, then that project is now going to say, Hey, you didn't update you know, for whatever reason. So now it's not going to work because your, your, your versions are different. So you want to make sure that you're consistent with that stuff. And um, before I forget, I actually forgot to do my sound check. So um, I want to do that really, really quick. OK, there we go. So um, yeah, so you want to make sure you just NPM. We're just going to install this and we're going to just remove the dash G because we don't want it globally. We just want the most recent, but well, we just want to get it store it here and um, that'll save us from that specific problem. So that means anytime you use um, a project, you want to make sure that when you're installing stuff, you only install that stuff in that project because if you start expanding it to inc be included globally, then that means all your projects are going to have the same exact stuff and it just it doesn't really help you be flexible when you might be working on different projects at different versions at different times. Like say maybe you're working on two projects at once. Then one project is on one version, one project is on another. You want to make sure that you can go back and forth without having to do a lot of work. So um, this is going to take a second to install and this actually comes with a lot of stuff. And what you're going to see in a second is that um, we're, gonna be, we're pretty much moving into a completely different environment. So the back end was running on um, Node.js to get all that stuff deployed and on the web. Now that we're using Angular, um, it's a whole different process. And I'll walk you guys through that step by step. Um, it's kind of hard to just summarize it because there's so much going on. And um, we're just going to keep letting that go. And um, 
here are some of the angular commands that they have here so what's going to happen is when this installs we're going to be able to create well it's not so um and another reason why i did it here is because this node modules thing uh as you can see here we're starting to get some angular stuff up in there um that wasn't there before and uh that's great so seems like it's done we got all the stuff we needed and um there's gonna be a few more things we're gonna want um a little later but um we won't need it right now so we're gonna go ahead and follow this and I'm actually going to pull this over to another window so I can just read it as I go without having to change a lot of stuff. And um, let's see here. So we're going to do ng, and I might have to do mpx because since I didn't install globally, it might not recognize it. Um, we'll see in a second. And I'm just going to call this app because um, we already in the, we're already in this di directory, so we know globally in terms like you know the big package we know that this is our app right so now i'm just saying okay this is the server stuff here's our app if that makes sense like this is the client you know i could easily call this client but i just think app is a little bit more um not specific but it's just what i've seen so we're gonna ng new app and that's really all you have to do so now it's creating a up oh, there we go so you so with this mpx is I don't really know what it is. I, I can't really describe it because again, I haven't um, done that much with this. Um, so I'm just going to show you um, npx, right? This is usually the command you have to use when you're using um, when you're running off of that local instance instead of that global instance, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, so if we do this again, it should work. So we do npx ng new app. And we should get that ball rolling there. So here we go. And um, it's asking, asking us, do we want to add Angular routing? And this routing is what we use to help our web page navigate um, between all of the different endpoints that we created for our backend. So we can just go ahead, hit yes, and we're going to want that. And in here, um, this is actually something interesting because when I first started develop, um, got into web development, I only knew CSS. They have something called SCSS and then yes, and they also have SAS, less and stylus. So these are all different kind of things for creating your, um, your style sheets. And this is like, this is like the meat. Uh, this is not the meat this is this is the the muscle excuse me all the details if you're looking like you know node.js and all that other stuff is like the well html is like the skeleton right then you got css which is like the muscle the eyes the skin the blood all that extra stuff that makes it unique this is what css can do but we're going to use scss this is just something that's a little bit newer and um it gives you a lot more um ability to use um to do different things and the only reason why i'm using this is because um it's something i'm forcing myself to use because i see it being used um in industry so i just want to make sure i have it in my projects just to show that i understand it and i can use it and um it does give you a little bit more privileges to extend um the stuff that you can do in uh, css so we'll see some we might see some of that in this project i, I can't say for sure because i don't think it's that complex but, um, you know, when you're doing your style sheets, sometimes having that extra capability is a big plus. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. So this is going to take a second for this thing to, <coughs> excuse me, to install. And um, while that's installing, I'm going to grab me some allergy medicine. So... And actually, since I don't see the printout, I have no idea how long this is actually going to take. So. Dang it. Child proof works. Alright, so it might take a second. Um, I know some people um, use another package hand, uh, manager called Yarn. I think that is a lot faster. I'm not sure what the difference. I mean, I think 
the difference is just the the host like who manages it so um i don't know if there's any trade-offs between um libraries and products being you know version controlling so um can't say for sure anything about that but i just stick to mtm M npm because that's what i know that's what i use um so it's no biggie just a matter of preference you can probably get a little bit more speed if you use yarn and where's the servant size for this thing no one's out of it a problem to do with split T. Well, if there is, you guys will find out and you'll see it live. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have no idea how long this is going to take. It's uh, one of those things. So, hmm, I guess while that's going, we can try to, well, we already have the resource that we need from, um, Adobe XD, but I guess um, I'll take I'll take another second to walk through the design. So this is going to be our landing page, and and when I say this, I mean like all of this. But what's going to happen is this is going to be the main screen, right? This is going to be the main screen, and then once you start scrolling, you'll start to see this stuff come up, and um, it looks really nice here. <laughs> But um, it's really hard for me um, as a weirdo to imagine stuff, you know, without it being there. Like, even when I look here, it still doesn't seem real. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, all of this stuff is going to come alive. We're going to have um, all these links and stuff become available. But in order to do this, I'm thinking that instead of starting here, I think I might want to start with our my dashboard for me to log in and get in and do stuff because um, <laughs> that's kind of more important if I can't get any content in. And also, this will help me because in order to get this content in, I need to be able to have a dashboard, right? You know, if you, if you I, there's no website, there's no content on the website. This part doesn't exist and um, this will help me dig into those APIs that I want to use so for instance you know the login stuff this is going to be fairly simple there's not much going on here but once you start going over to you know this part here is um, not tricky but there's some things going on there right um, there's also some stuff going on this is going to be one of the biggest parts and when I say biggest I don't mean like biggest in terms of like it's going to be a lot of code or but this is going to be one of the, this is the core of, you know, these uh, pages are going to be the core of what, how content gets into the website. This is going to populate all other stuff. So these two um, components have to be done in order to get everything else going. So this process is more than likely going to start here and then we'll work our way down. And then once, excuse me, once we get here, we can work our way back to um, the other dashboard and work through that stuff. So let's see how far things are going. So it's still hung up here. And when it gets like this, I'm always a, a little nervous to stop it because if I stop it, I always feel like I'm screwing something up. So I'm actually just going to leave that there. <laughs> um, so that way I don't lose anything. But you see, once we get in here, we start to have a whole lot more stuff coming in. We start to have these, um, our own node modules kind of thing. Um, we have, what else do we have? So you get the source here, which holds all of the actual code for this app, for the app that we're creating. Um, you get a lot of this stuff here. You get your Angular JSON, you get your browser list. And this is actually just to show you what browsers that you can use. And I believe, um, this has this plays a part in um, testing as well, so that's cool. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm not too familiar with this. I don't actually use this. You know, I don't look at this. This is um, Karma. So this is something that'll come into play once we start getting components done, because we'll add tests, and this is going to be a very very. What's the word? This is actually going to be a longer process than when we did for the back end because the only thing we did was send data, control data, right? When we get here, we have to do a whole lot more because we're going to be 
imitating user interactions to make sure things are working properly the buttons are clicking um your when you click a button the data is there you know all that kind of stuff so um that's going to be a lot more complex as well so that's going to be a real real big learning curve for me um actually i mean i have some experience doing it but i haven't done it you know on my own fully fleshed you know full fledged i've done you know a little here a little manipulation you know grab something update it but here we're going to have a lot of stuff going on and then down here you see all the dev dependencies that go on with this and um this is the stuff that goes up into production um what else we got a readme that shows us this stuff some of the shortcuts we have you got your ts config and this is actually this ts is typescript because now we're not going to be using pure javascript anymore to code we're going to be using typescript and that's going to give us a lot of flexibility not flexibility but more control over the data types that are going between our code. Like if we say something's going to be a string, we can enforce that throughout the rest of our code. So this is going to be give us a lot more power and control. Also, we have um, another JSON for this, and this is what sets our options for this. So here it's using, uh, it tells us what kind of, which level of ECMAScript it's using. And it's using ECMAScript 2018, I believe. Well, I think it has the capability to use it, but you can also use the uh, ECMAScript 2015, which is um, one of the older versions. Um, and there's this gives you a lot more code about, um, in this case, is more about the quality of your code. So um, allow flagging certain things as errors that maybe wouldn't be, but just to make sure that you're doing things that you want to enforce throughout your code, you, you might want to have some options there for that. Um, I think, I don't know what this is. I think this is like a test or something. I don't know. And this thing, again, I don't know. It's more so about the governance of your code, quality, syntax, all that kind of stuff. So like here, max line length, all that. So um, I think we're good enough to go ahead and start diving into this. And here is one of the first things that you'll see. So this is actually the router then this controls navigation between all of your stuff. So um, this controls, you know, when you click a button, if you go to another another route, um, for instance, uh, like how we have down here in Adobe XD, if we click our home, our about, our services, our portfolio, our blog, our contact, all of that stuff is controlled through routing. And also here, when you log in, you're gonna route to this screen, right? And then you have your dashboard. And then here we can also jump back to the code and see it. So um, there's a lot to do. And all of that revolves around routing. Even these transitions here are route, use routing. So that'll be something big that we'll be using. And here is, um, this is actually starter code that they give you to um, just test out your stuff. And um, this installing packages has been running for a really long time. So I'm going to go ahead and do some Googling because something ain't right. Let me go ahead and hit that one. So let's go and say Angular CLI installing packages. It's not. So let's check this thing out and see what's going on. So, eh, I don't need to do sudo because I'm not on the map. So I'm thinking I can just go ahead and hit control C on that because, oh, there we go. It finished. So I didn't have to do anything. So it just really, it just takes a long time. That's it. Um, oh my gosh, man. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my gosh, I need some tissue. Um, thank you. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I went outside today, and allergy season is in full effect. So, um, one of the first things that we can actually do is 
we can play around with this um what they call favicon thanks and this is um a favicon is literally i'm probably saying this wrong but um i'm trying to open oh so you see these little uh icons at the top of your browsers those are the favicons that you'll see when you're um when you log into a website um not long and we um, just navigate to it really it just displays that icon so we can actually customize that and put our own in there and uh, just give me a second I gotta blow my nose Sorry about that. The uh, headphones got disconnected. So, um, yeah, we don't have to worry about this anymore because we got this. So, what we're going to do now is it's a few things, really. So, this um, index.html, right? So, I'm going to show you something really cool because right now we have stuff that we can push. And before I do anything else, <laughs> I need to do a... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? I'm gonna do npm. No, not just. I need to do git stash because um, we're actually still on master. Actually, no. I think I saved myself because I knew I would do this. Um, I should be on the dev branch. Oh, I'm still on branch master. I forgot I changed my branch the other day because I was working with the uh, AWS stuff. So um, gosh, I want to move um this stuff to my dev branch because I don't want to push this up to master. So what I'm going to do is, so here I got my uh, light sales stuff running. So I got my AWS instance running and that's why you see this message here um, because my server is actually live. So if I went here, I'm sorry, I'm sidetracked it, but I'm, I'm really excited to show you guys this. Um, you see that empty array, it's, it's, it's calling my database and there's nothing there right now. So I'm really excited that that's up, but um, back to the task at hand here. Um, <sighs> forgot that quick so let's go back here um yeah there we go um i want to check and get um started um uh, working on wrong branch and i think i can just do this by i can like commit all this stuff and then just push it to another branch Here we go. I've been working on the project. Unfortunately, I forgot to switch to my branch and as such, I've been working on master. How I can copy the files. Ah, okay. So, that's simple. <clears throat> you may not actually have to stash if the differences between your current branch and the are not in any of the files you modified locally. Yes. Um, <clears throat> this doesn't involve commit stash. Oh, it saves away local modification. The stash applier brings them back. How can I? Oh, yeah. So we can get rid of those doing that. Um, so this is what we're going to do. So we're going to stash this stuff. So we're going to do git stash. All right, cool. And then we're going to do, um, what was this? Save, look at me right through here, next state. Oh, wait, huh? All right, that, that doesn't matter, I guess. Um, yeah, because these are the only changes they caught. So I'm just going to do git, check out, and we're going to check out our dev branch. And then um, now we can do get. Actually, I need to do two things. I need to pull from the or, um, the master. So I'm gonna do get merge origin 
master. I think I need to do slash master. Because I did make some changes over the weekend to get the AWS stuff up. And um, I don't want to merge master. I'm, so there will be a conflict later, but it doesn't matter. So we need to get stash apply. Yep, merge conflict. So this is something that I really like about Visual Studio Code. We have a merge conflict. And that just means is that just say, hey, you got some files in here. You said you needed one thing, but um, we're seeing something else. So this is shows a discrepancy between two files. And um, if you look here, this is what it is. So we're getting this new stuff that we didn't have before. So we're just going to say, accept the incoming change. And then we'll leave it at that. And um, we can actually go ahead and save this. And then we'll uh, stage the change. That's what happens when we do that git add. And um, yeah, that should do it. Um, so, so now we do that. Now that we have that conflict reserve, I'm mean resolved. These are all the changes that we had, which is exactly what we expected. So now we're back to where we were. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, actually, we need to change our directory now because we now need to get into this app and we want to get into this SRC. So we're going to do CD app. And then um, I believe we're good here. And then I'm going to just do NPM st uh, start. Actually, no, uh, I should be able to just run ng. Let's see, ng start. I believe, or is it ng serve? I forget which one. And we can check this uh, readme file they had for us. So you say ng serve for the development server. There we go. So ng serve. Um, so I'm going to do npx ng serve because we don't have it installed globally. So you got to do that npx. And the ng actually just stands for Angular. So now it's taking some time to do some stuff, so it should be working. And uh, we're going to see something really cool in a second. So as you, kn you guys know, we haven't written any code yet. So um, what's going to happen is all of this pre, um, all this pre-built stuff is going to give us a web page to look at before we even start to work on it. So let's just let it compile all of the the code that it's pulling that it's got, and then um, it's gonna run up live into the browser. So this process, um, though this step in the, this phase in the development process, getting your front end up and running, um, I'm always a little nervous and skeptical because um, every time it feels like the first time, no matter how many times I've done it. Um, and granted, I still haven't done it that many times for, you know, on my own, for, on my own, but, um, you know, it's always a challenge for me because I'm like, oh, you know, do I remember how stuff goes? Do I remember how it's supposed to look, the order, all that kind of stuff. But, um, let me just go ahead and show you guys what we have. And I believe Angular always deploys to, um, it's supposed to be 4,200. For some reason, something's telling me to check 5,000. Okay, yeah, so let's do 4,200. And you saw that A pop up, so that's how I know it's there. So this is what they give you right here to create this. So this is all from Angular before we even did anything. Um, we're not going to use this. I just want to show you guys that there that what all that extra code in there does. So we go here and we delete all of this, right? And then we delete. Uh, I'm going to leave this alone. And then if I just rerun this, um, you'll see something. So let me just save that file and then run it again. You go to the browser and I can see anything. Look at that. And you see, we, I didn't even have to refresh it. It did automatically. Like we have a blank screen because there's nothing there. So this is where we're going to make the magic happen. So first thing first is when you have this um, app thing, we're actually not going to put anything in here. 
we're going to leave this alone. And um, in my experience with Angular, um, you don't even have to, before I say it, I want to check. <laughs> um, you don't even have to add in the um, HTML setup as you usually would if you were um, if you were just coding in straight pure HTML without um, any development environment or anything like that. Usually when you start an HTML template, you have to do something like, um, I think it's like this, and you have to do like HTML to let the browser know that you're using HTML. But since we're using Angular, Angular is handling all that communication for us. So we don't have to do any of that. And right now, we're actually not going to put much in here. So I'm going to stop this because we're, we're, this is not our, you know, that's not what we're building. Um, and then I'm going to go back over to the Angular CLI. And, oh, actually, no. So this is, I mean, this is where we are now. So we're, um, we have a fresh app, and I'm just going to clean out all of this stuff. I'm going to leave this alone, but um, let's get ready to get started. So uh, this is going to get really complex really fast. So I hope that I don't um, move too fast. But um, if you guys have any questions, just drop me a line down in the comments. Oh, this is what I was talking about here. So usually when you're doing HTML, you got to do this. But Angular handles this for us. And um, right here, this app root is referring to this app root here and we don't have to do this um we're going to go through all of this stuff i'm going to do the first one manually and then um we'll go through the rest um in a faster way so the first thing that i'm going to do in here is i'm going to create a new folder and this folder is just going to be the login screen and so as you saw here um each one of these, um, I'm calling them components, like each one of these um, artboards, right? Each one of these artboards is going to be its own component because it's going to be the workspace that we're using. And um, with Angular, they use a lot of things. They use something called components, which is, um, it can be something as big as this whole um, page here, or it can be something as small as just this little window here. And um, you want to use these components wisely because um, it's supposed to simplify your, your workflow, right? Um, they're reusable parts that you can, you know, mix and match to do different things. So you save yourself some development time because you don't have to rewrite the same code over and over again and just change little things. You have a, a lot of power and control over how you can set these things up. So... Um, let me just go ahead and set up this next thing and I'm just going to call this login, right? So we have this login and there's nothing in here. So we're going to start with our new file and this is going to be login dot component because this is going to be a component that we're working with dot TS. And this TS just stands for TypeScript, just like the dot JS stands for JavaScript. Um, we're also going to need login login dot component component dot um, spec and this is for our tests um, we're not going to get through this yet dot ts right and then we have we're going to need four files for this so we're going to login dot component dot um, html so this is going to be where we put all of the stuff that people are going to see and then we have one more file this is going to be the scss stuff Login dot component dot um uh, was this uh, not HTML but dot SCSS there we go because we're using that for our mockup and um, we can literally jump right in here and um, what I want to do is create a divider well this is a, a div element and um, what this is going to do is is this is going to contain hold all our data so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to call this um well i'm not going to do this yet but um this is um something that we can use to house all of the stuff that we want to show in um on this screen so we're going to have our logo we're going to have our login all of that stuff is going to be in here 
So that's why I did a div to just house it so that way it's all nested together. And we're gonna need a few things. We're gonna need our logo, image, we're gonna need this background color. And um, one cool thing about this is we can all we can we can use classes. So um, if you're not familiar with HTML, um, I'll try to work through the lingo um, a bit and try to give a little bit of um, explanations about the elements as I use them. But I don't want to take away from people who already know this, so I won't go super in depth about the uh, depth about them. So um, bear with me. Um, it's, there's a bunch of tutorials on the on the internet that'll give you a breakdown, and they're only about one or two hours, so you don't really have to spend a lot of time to learn HTML um, unless you you want to. So feel free to go ahead and look around on that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class, and this class is going to be called. I'm just going to call this um, purple, actually I'll call it um, theme, themed background, right? So you can really call this anything. I'm just going to call this um, container. Well, now I'll call it purple. Yeah, I'll call it purple container so that way we know what it is. And um, there's also this styles CSS that I can use as well to make, um, to do global styles. But since I haven't gotten to that level yet, I'm just gonna create this purple container just to show you guys something. And then um, here, I'm just gonna say um, dot class, well, dot purple container. So now we're in our SCSS file. And we'll be jumping back and forth between the HTML, the SCSS, and the TS file. So um, there's gonna be a lot of stuff going in here. And then we're also gonna do, use something called services and um that is going to be uh a lot because we're going to have to actually connect to our server to actually communicate and send things so in order for a login like how we said we, we're going to create a form we're going to do a bunch of stuff there so um there's a lot to be done here so what we're going to do is starting with this purple container and i'm just trying to start as slow as possible just to try to show you guys little by little what's happening and um, I'll pick the speed up as as um, as things um, go along. So I just want to get this um, code for this color, and I'm just going to say uh, color, and I'm going to paste that in. And there we go. So I'm actually just going to save this. And um, on the app thing, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put. Um, uh, so in order to do this, right, we have to do something and we have to really set to create the component because as of now, we say this is a component in the file, but we don't actually have a component. So in order to do that, uh, Angular has some, um, what do you call these things? Um, what is this? Um, they have, they use something called containers. And what this container is going to do is Oh my God, I forgot the syntax. Oh, not the syntax, but I forgot how it looks. Oh, okay. Oh, what did I call it? Com oh, I call it container, I need component. That's why I looked weird. So at component, so this tells Angular that, um, it's an annotation, there we go. It's an annotation that tells Angular, hey, this is a component, here's some information about it, um, get ready, pretty much. So, so now we have our component and this is where we say, hey, the selector, we're gonna give it a name. And I believe that when you create these names, they have to be like, hyphen. they have to have two parts. So when I mean by two parts, I mean like we can do app dash login, right? Or we can say login component, right? You can say, Matt, you can say login component and then boom, right? And then after you do that, you have to tell it what the t where the template is, and I can't remember. So is it template URL or just template? Yeah, template URL. I mean, yeah, okay. Oh yeah, so template. So the difference between template and template URL is that you could literally write your template right in here into this. Um, I'm pointing at it like you. <laughs> I guess you guys know I'm pointing at my monitor, but um. If you just use template, you could literally write it in there directly, but I don't like to do that. It just looks messy to me. I want to keep that stuff separated. So um, now all you have to do is you're going to use this um, 
similar to what we did in the um, test when we had to do our file references. Since we're staying within this folder, we're just going to do a dot slash. And we're going to say this is going to be login dot component dot html. And that's all we should have to do there. And then we're going to say styles URLs. And you can actually have multiple style um, sheets referenced to the same component. So the only thing we're going to do is we're only going to use the one though. So we're going to just do login uh, dot component. Oh, forgot a dot slash. I mean dot slash login dot component dot um, scss. And this is something that Angular uses to um, recognize. To and this is how Angular knows. Okay, when I load this component, I need to pull in this HTML template and I need to apply these styles and then down here you actually have to create you have to set the component up so in order to do that you see this right here I just wanted to remember I need to put that export in there so we're gonna do export and then we're gonna do um, export class because they still use um, they use something called classes which are uh, I, I pretty much their blueprint of a specific object and when I say object it's think of it as something structured like um, JSON um, not necessarily JSON it just has properties but it's it can do a lot more it can have uh, methods it can ha it can have methods functions whatever you want to call them um, it can have a lot of different stuff stored on it and that's as best as I can explain it right now at least on the fly <laughs> Something like this, I'd have to prepare for. Not prepare. I'd have to prepare for it before I can just spitball it to someone who doesn't know what it is. And this is just gonna be login component. And we're just gonna do that. So now you see it's happy because at first it was like, hey, at component, okay, you're telling me this stuff here, but I don't see the actual component. So now this is where we're gonna set our component up. So to keep it simple. Um, I'm actually I'm actually not gonna put anything in here. I'm just going to save it just like this. But um, here, this is where I was going. In order to actually load our component, I need to use, um, in, I need to go here and say, hey, load this component. And there it is. So now if we save this and then we go um, mpxng serve, we'll see a purple background and nothing else. Uh, any minute now, once this uh, ng, MPX ng serve starts to kick in, sometimes it takes a while for this stuff to catch up, but uh, it takes a while. So here we go. Uh, there's an error. And interestingly enough, oh, I forget. So when you're, so this brings me to something that. It's hard to omit other stuff when I explain this stuff. So um, hopefully you at least have a basic understanding of HTML, CSS. But when we have this stuff here, I need to register these components via using something called modules. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this login Actually, I haven't really thought about how I want to do these things. Uh, I could put the login on. The login component is actually not going to be at the base of this. So I'm going to have to worry, think about the layout um, as I go through this. But um, the, the problems that it's having is that I said, hey, use this component. But Angular is like, what is this? And it's because it's not here. Well, it's not here. <laughs> So what I need to do is I need to go in here and, and add, they have this thing called ng module. And this is how it knows which components do what. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, we're gonna use this thing called a login component. I need you to pull this thing in and know what it is. So when we do that, now you're telling Angular that this thing exists because it's like, a, think about it as a registration. You can go, you can get your uniform, show up to school, uh, go to your classes and the people and you know if you don't register 
you know, you don't enroll. People are like, hey, who, who's this guy showing up? You know, who's this person showing up? Um, now nah, I have no idea what I did. Um, I'm a little rusty, so um, bear with me. I do think that I have at least the basics in here correctly. Um, I'm just going to stop this because sometimes, again, uh, as you guys saw with the back end, that um, caching is a thing. And I think the problem here is not necessarily that, um, oh, the other stuff didn't save. Okay, so mm, less bigger, um, not say less bigger, but um, not the problem I, was, I thought it was. I thought it was something else, but I just didn't even save my files. So here we should see the purple background. I uh, can't say for sure, to be honest. So I'm just doing F12. Um, should see it, but we're not seeing it. Um, I don't know why. I uh, probably should have did background color as opposed to color because that color probably just points to a um. That's what I'm looking for. Like, uh, if you had like text, but if I did background color, that should do it. So it's reloading now. And uh, to get to this window here, you can hit F12 if you're on Windows. It should be the same key everywhere, um, but I can't say for sure. So the only thing I'm trying to do is just show this purple background. And um, it's not happening. I'm not stressing it because this isn't, um, like I said, this isn't where I was. Um, I'm just trying to get this set up with the um I'm trying to get something visual as soon as possible um pretty much just the sooner you have something that you can see the better and um what I'm thinking is happening here is that I don't have anything in this container so it just didn't show up at all um essentially I thought when, well when you have this something set up like this thought that I would have at least um what's the word I'm looking for Thought that I would have at least, um, I don't know what I was going there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I kind of, I'm used to rambling so much that sometimes I, I, I start um, sentences without an intention to finish them. Um, but I was just trying to get something going really fast. So I'm just going to put a H1 in here just to see if it's, if I can get something on the screen pretty much. Right. So then now you have some stuff in here and it's not empty. So now this hello should have a purple background and it's not going to take up much space. Yeah, there was just no content to display. So I was right in that regard. So what's going to happen is that this div needs to take up the whole page, right? So if I put purple container, I need this thing to take up the whole page, right? So in order to do that, um, you have to use your SCSS, right? So what we're going to do is I can literally just go in here and instead of, you know, I can be very specific or I can just say, hey, height, 100%. You want to, I want you to take up the whole page. And I kind of like using these percentages. Um, it's a little, some people have their, um, their problems with it <laughs> um, because it's not always going to give you what you need. So in this case, you saw I did height 100%, right? The only thing it did 100% of the space that of this content, it took up 100% of this, right? If I changed it to, let's say, there's other options you have on this. I'm just, I don't use this, I don't do this stuff enough to remember. So if I did, let's say I, I give it a specific number, right? Let's say I want you to be 500 pixels, right? And I really don't like using pixels well, I'm not going to say I don't like it because I use it, but um, I want to get out of using pixels because, as you can see here, it's very limited. But what happens when I start to shrink this page, right, down to the size of, you know, a phone? Granted, my screen didn't get that small, but um, you start to have other issues. So um, we're going to definitely talk about that stuff as we go through this. But um, for now, um, we have what I needed. So in order to get this working properly, 
we have that and um i really want to pull in some assets from since we're using static um i don't mind having these um the images that i'm about to pull in i don't mind having them in here and sitting in the file directory because they're going to be deployed every time we do this so it's easier to just have the files built in so that way we don't slow down the um the application when it wants to pull stuff in so i might rename this too because this seems weird to have app and then have app so i might just rename this to client because the well i thought i rena renamed it to client let me try that again client oh okay so oh i get it because we're using this uh thing here it's not gonna let you do anything i think so let's try this again still busy interesting um one more time because i am persistent all right i don't know what to do um i'm going to tack it because i can so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do it directly using the file structure and hopefully it doesn't break anything so i'm going to do uh rename client ah oh. okay oh these things are open so i'm going to close all of those and i'm going to save all the changes uh now i should be able to change it um as everybody knows what you can't change a file or a folder while it's in use all right i don't know oh uh, that's interesting that was most slightly different so i just want to try to rename this one more time because i am very persistent all right can't get it All right, so we see how our login is supposed to look. So using what we know how this thing is supposed to look, we're going to start building this. And it's fairly simple, right? Just a picture, little box here, little header stuff, little this, you know, not anything complex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called material. So I'm going to go up in here and I'm going to do an angular material and what this is is angular already has some pre-created components so um when you want to have let's say this right here right um a card and the login screens that you usually see um like something like this right this is a card this is what they call a card so i want a card but i want to change some things about it i want to keep the um as you see here i want to tell with the login as the i guess like the header for it and then i want this to be the content that we put in there uh or i can call you can call it the footer and it already has some spacing and things like that that it automatically does for us so that's great because we can go in here and view the code and just see how this thing is set up and i'm lazy so i'm just gonna grab this and um I'm going to go and paste this in to our login component HTML, but I'm going to keep it within our purple container. Reason being is we still want the background to be purple. So um, I'm going to just remove this class from it. I'm actually going to remove all of the information in here except for this. Uh, I think example header image. Nope. So I think that's a class they had actually. So I'm going to remove this thing, right? Uh, actually, I don't need this whole thing. I don't need any of this. This is a that's the way they had everything set up so that way they can have that dog picture in there. But I don't care. I don't want that. So we can just remove that. And then the title is what we want here. So I can go ahead and say title is going to be login. Right. And then we don't need a subtitle. So we're going to remove that. And then. They have this image that they used. Don't need that. 
and then now this is the content and in the content the only thing that we had was the input and we had two input fields so the first one is going to be the input that we used for our um, email and then we're going to have a second input that we're going to use for our password um, and then in between here um, we're going to use something called a mat input and mat input just allows us to customize the input fields a little bit because if you use a raw input so I'll just uh, remove that and just leave it just the way it is um, you'll see they look pretty nasty so hopefully I didn't screw anything up and uh, actually I'm actually gonna run this um, this uh, server um, on another screen so that way I can just start and stop it as neat as I need to without compromising what we already have uh, come on Jeez, uh, I think I opened <laughs> the terminal at the wrong place. Um, geez, um, let me see if I did run as an administrator. If that'll put me at the right place I need to be. Nope. All right, so first I need to figure out how to get back into me. I think I can just push the. Oh, come on. All right, so cd dot dot ls uh, not ls. See, this is what I want Mac so bad. I'm so used to using um, the Linux terminal commands that um, I don't really remember how to get into my own thing. And actually, I'm gonna go all the way back because uh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, let's see, cmd, and then oh, there we go. I don't know what happened the first time. So I'm going to do um, CD programming. And another thing I don't like about this is the tab auto completion. This doesn't do you justice. Because once you go another level deep, it's just gone. Um, so watch this. It doesn't even follow. So William com slash, uh, what do we call this client, right? Oh, no, I didn't let me do it. So we're going to do app. So now I'm going to do MPX ng serve. And I'm just going to leave that running. And I'll put that somewhere else. And I have that on another screen so that way I can just see if there's an error. And I still have my terminal here freed up, which uh, helps me do those quick commands. If I need to install something, change something, I can do it right here without having to stop, start, all that kind of stuff. And uh, it seems like I have some errors. I'll bring it over to you so you can see. And I think the problem here is that I didn't import the module. So now that I'm using this material stuff, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this its own module. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we're storing um, data. Well, when you create a module, you might have all the libraries and stuff that you need to use for that specific um, component might, um, what's the word? It might need to be used elsewhere. So you might want if you if it's something that needs to be elsewhere, then you might want to have a module that you can share between different components. But just to make things easy for now, I'm just going to show you guys how you set how you would set that up, and I'll set it up here in the app module. And then as um, the login component stuff gets more um, complete, we'll fix that. So we're just going to go ahead and do um, import, and we're going to import the mat. I believe what is it mat card module let me see what uh angular says yeah mat card module import mat card module and if i put the comma here hover over it, it should import oh so that means i don't have material installed so if i go up to the node modules we don't see the material so what i need to do is I need to install Angular Material. And the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Guides. And um, you guys are going to see in a second why. So getting started. And in order to get started, we got to ng add it. So we're going to do, and that's why I said keep the terminal free. So we're going to ng 
add material. I believe that's what it was. Oh, at angular material. So I'm going to do at angular slash material. So this gives us access to all of that stuff that we saw on the side. And um, there's actually a lot. So like, while that's installing, we'll go and look at all of the stuff. So they have auto complete boxes, check boxes, um, a date picker. So you can pick dates for stuff. You know, you can click this and drop that thing down. They have form fields, which we'll get into in a little bit. Um, they have inputs, which we um, actually is perfect time. So this is a basic input, right? Basic, basic, basic input. So this is a mat input to say, hey, this is something that you can use with the form field and use it within a form group, a group of stuff that goes in the form. So think about an application that has all those fields you got to fill in. That's exactly what a form is. Got your radio buttons. You got a selector where, you know, you can drop these drop downs. You got sliders. Um, like you might see them on YouTube when you're turning your volume up and down, um, slider toggle where you're like, Hey, activate, deactivate, you know, you got your menus and this is a button drop down menu. You, you actually interact with these a lot more. Well, a lot, we probably don't even know it when you're using mobile websites and you have these menus. That's what that is. Um, same thing here with the side nav. If you've ever seen something where, um, Oh, you can't see it here. You got to open something else. I don't feel like doing that. Um, they have like toolbars, which are it's pretty much just things that just sit at the top and tell you who you are. Um, and then you have your card, which is what we're using. They have dividers, which, um, you know, divides your, your stuff. Actually, this is interesting. So you can, you can actually use this with the components, right? Um, you might you might have seen in other places that um, it just gives you a line separator really that's really all it is um, and you see this mat divider right there it just gives you that horizontal line all across and uh, the expansion panel this is probably where you see like when you're filling out stuff and you got all these panels that you can fill out to do different things um, so 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 much stuff that you have in here there's a whole lot more right we'll, we'll use some of these so you'll you'll get familiar and um, here we have to pick our theme. Um, I'm actually going to use a custom theme, but I forget how this stuff works. So I'm just going to do, um, actually, let me look over here, right? And I'll, I'll walk you through the theme. So the theme is really about your buttons. So here, I don't really have a lot of flavor in my buttons. So it's actually pretty bland right now. So um, for my theme, I really want to have this purple, white kind of theme to match what's going on up here. So um, actually, I don't feel like dealing with that. So let's try to deep purple amber. And we can actually see what this theme looks like by hitting control and clicking on it. We're going to open this thing up and see what this purple amber theme. Actually, I like this. This is actually pretty close to my color. So I'll keep it and you see the buttons actually like an amber color. So I'm actually going to just pick that theme and then I can always modify it later. So let's go with that and hit enter. Set up global angular. Nope. Browser animations for angular material. Um, yeah, I think I need that. Um, and then it's going to take as well, take a while to install. And that just makes this stuff available so that way we can use it in our application because right now our application doesn't know that it can import that Mac card module and we actually need that to continue on. So I do have to wait for this. Hopefully not as long as last time. Oh, there it is actually. So um, now if I save this, we're going to have an error and uh, it's like, uh, Oh, it's newer. Wait, what? So I'm just gonna hit this. I'm not gonna save it. Reason being, uh, it seems like it already updated. So um, we'll go back to the module. Yeah, I added some new stuff in here. That's what it was. And then now we're gonna add in our comma mat card module comma. And if I hover over it, uh, it still didn't get it. So okay, fine. Um, import. 
Actually, let me check up the null modules one more time. Seems like it didn't import it. So I think um, what happens is it's in here. Uh, I'll show you guys. So I think I created a, yeah, where is that? Should have been in here somewhere. All right, let's see if we can find this thing because all right, so I'm going to go down to the get started, right? NG add material. The NG add will install Angular material. Okay, set up your browser. So did all that. So now we should just be able to import it like I thought. Okay, so uh, let's just go over to import. So we're going to write this out manually. And as you saw, uh, as you saw in a uh, Node.js, we use require. This is a different way of importing stuff. So just um, same thing, just keep that in mind. And then we're gonna say from, and I don't know why this doesn't auto load my stuff. So maybe I'm missing a library that I thought I had. Um, and that, I mean, not a library, but an extension. And for some reason it doesn't, this it isn't aware about this yet. So I'm feeling like my install didn't go in. So yeah, it's not, it doesn't know what it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check this package.json if I can find it. And it seems materials here. So I'm just gonna do npm install. npm install to hope that all of the stuff that we just installed here becomes available everywhere else. I, I thought it would be there already, but I don't see it. So I'm just gonna try to force it. And we should see it over here in our node module. So we'll know. Oh, actually, no, it's right there. Yeah, so I don't know why it didn't, it didn't grab it. So um, I'm gonna close that out check this thing again and still nothing so let me control c because i know with modules it doesn't um doesn't take right away like if you change a file and again guys this is uh getting set up is one of the toughest parts for me just because it's there's so many steps involved and you kind of got to get your um build your momentum So huh. got me starting a day early at work. Wait, what a second, huh? Sorry guys, I got it uh distracted by my email. But this is all fine. Um there we go. So it's getting all of the material stuff in there. I didn't see that before. So hopefully it's picking up on this. So I still have a problem with this because we installed the library. Um, it's definitely in here on our um, Angular material stuff. So I don't know why that isn't uh, working for us. And I don't know how it got so low in the package. So that's something that I'll look into as time goes on. Okay, still compiling. So yeah, I think it, it was more so an issue with the compiler because as you see now, it's compiling all of those modules. Before, it had no idea what that stuff was. So it, did, it threw an error. It probably will still throw an error because I'm seeing this red underline. But uh, we'll see in a second, right? Um, I'm actually gonna ignore that and see if everything is still, if it's still running because um, like I said, it doesn't know that that thing even exists. So this time it's, it's okay, really doesn't like it. The server's still running, which is interesting. Matt card module, Matt card module. So 
So angular material. Um, let's go. Ng add material. Not working. In at import from at angular material error. Yeah, here we go. So I think what uh, I needed to do was um, so there's like a module that I can use um, to set everything up to install the module so I can actually install the in the module from um, the command line oh this is what I'm looking for here can't find module at any other material so um, and even oh they don't have it there in their project so I do have to do this so I don't know why they didn't show you that on the other page so I'm going to install both of these. So I'm just going to do it um, right here in the terminal. I thought I had to do that, but I didn't. I thought it came pre-shipped. So I was wrong. Oh, hopefully I didn't do it twice. All right. Uh, so it seems like my terminal is frozen. So I'm going to open a new one. And control shift V. All right, you don't like it? Come on, use this one. CLS, control shift V, control shift V. All right, we'll just do control V. All right, d nothing like say npm install dash dash save, right? At Angular material. at angular slash material and away we go so now we're just installing all of the material stuff that we could possibly need and um yeah we're just gonna go ahead and install this thing so we can have it in our project uh it'll take some time and while that's doing that, I want to install the npm install dash dash save. Um, is it in uh, at Angular? I think it's slash animations because um, and that does the talk the animations for like the um, the togglers and all that stuff because those are technically animations. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Hopefully I spelled animations correctly. So that installed. And then while the animations are installing, I, I'm still going to go ahead and do the MPX ng serve. Because I don't think we have any animations on our card. So this stuff is loading up. And again, we're going to finish this stuff out. Uh, I just want to give you guys a, a quick look at what the input looks like before we start adding the material stuff onto it. And um, so that way you can guys, you can just see what you're getting out of it. So far though, our MPX ng serve has still yet to render anything. Uh, seems like my computer is skipping frames. Um, so hopefully you guys aren't noticing any lack of uh, quality as this thing goes on as that's very uh, not cool. All right. um, has this thing started to run? I see I'm seeing something over here. All right, I'm not sure what's going on, so I'm just going to redo it. Oh, there we go. I don't know why that works sometimes. I'll be waiting for this compiler, and I'll just start hitting Control-C to get ready to get out of it. And then it'll be like, oh, no, don't don't, don't kill me. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, 
try this again and I'm thinking by the next time you guys see this I'll probably have an Ubuntu um, terminal so there luckily Windows did deploy something so that way you can have the best of all the world you can have your Windows operating system and all of that convenience and still use your um, your Linux um, terminal so that is a big win for um, Windows users because we all hate the terminal here it's just uh, I don't know what it is I don't it's just like there's a whole it's not as easy as Linux um, and I want to I wanted to say that I didn't I didn't want to say it because I thought it was biased but um, you know I've tried using stuff in the Windows terminal and this is very non-intuitive is is it's, it's unintuitive it's to, to the to the highest level and for some reason um, my browser still I mean not my browser but my code still doesn't want to accept the uh, angular material so I'm kind of I'm my wits in on that one so let me just copy this thing right here and see what the problem is um, control shift C control V and we're just gonna look this thing up so this is a problem I think it's really got an import mode for example we have an import mode for blah, blah, blah. Oh, so I think I just have to be a little bit more explicit. Slash, um, and you see, oh, okay, so I did have to be more explicit. So, um, it still doesn't seem like it's going to pick this thing up. Oh, it did. Okay, so I guess you, in, I guess this saves space. So, um, as somebody broke down here, in Angular 9, you have to be more explicit. In Angular 8, you can just specify one. Um, overarching package and get all of the individual pieces so that's that's that so we probably could have gotten away with that a whole <laughs> earlier without even having to do that but um, now that I think about it, I don't think I saw the that stuff popping up okay so now we got our compiled our stuff compiled and let's just see what we have over here um, cannot get error so that's not um, what we're looking at so there we go so now you see our card with our login all that stuff so now that's working how we want so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this content and we're gonna put a um, actually I can just put a class right on this thing and the class what I want to do is I want to change the way that this stuff is displayed so um and i might even put this class at a higher level Be, i might put this on the styles css because of you'll just see in a second because i'm going to use i'm going to actually use this in other places so i want to do dot um let's say um let's say um row layout right I, mean, I want column layout and this is going to be something that should be available globally so when I do column layout I want to say that I want to use um, display so this is the way that this block so think of uh, HTML elements and when I say an element like h1 that um, all of these little tags um, all of these little tags are elements so um, oops, don't okay. I want to change the way that this element is displayed instead of displaying it as a block meaning everything is on one line I want to display this thing as a flex I want to use um, something called flex and that's a CSS um, library that um, changes the way that your content is displayed and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say flex direction is going to be a column so that everything should be stacked on top of each other right and uh, I want to do another thing to say hey align each item or uh, what's 
lines within the flux aligned a flux containers lines within the flux container when okay no this is the one I want to do here and what I want to do is I want to align everything to be centered aligned along the center and um, I'm going to save that oh I should have put the class here I should have said uh, class equals column layout and uh, I'm not sure if this will work but um, the style CSS should pull this stuff in I'll Google that while we wait for this to pop up I already loaded it so let's say um, use a class from styles that SCSS angular styles look there we go so we should be able to use this everywhere though because it's a global thing so I'm trying to think if we have to add that to uh, let's go to getting star uh, all right, so not exactly sure how to use that styles that SCSS. Um, the only thing I can think of is to actually put that thing. Actually, let me just do this. We can hit something. We can go in here, and we can get all of the references to this thing. If I knew what I was doing, um, so I'm just gonna do uh, styles dot s c s c s s and see what else is using that so apparently not much all right um that didn't give me much so I'm just gonna do the styles s c s s that should have given me something um but I'm not seeing anywhere about it probably just because of the way it's set up meaning like styles SCSS is just a you know big thing styles SCSS there we go global styles that's what I'm looking for um, as of the beta release blah 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 copy use SCSS import to export external rules add more styles via the Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull that styles uh, SCSS into the um, module and see if that does it. It's probably another way to do that, but uh, I'm just going to try it here. I'm going to do um, dot dot slash. Once I do this dot dot slash, we are here. And I should just be able to do dot dot slash styles dot SCSS. Let's see if I do slash dot dot slash oh dot dot slash because we got to get out of login we got to get out of login then we've got to get out of app and then we go up to the src and So I'm just gonna get rid of this. It, it's not that important. I can always um, look this up offline and um, show you guys that later. So go in here, and we're gonna put this on this style here. And what I'll do is I'll do that, and now it should have that style. And um, let me go and look at our code over here. We should see it and now it's reloading so there you go so now it's you see it's in the center and we got this login thing going on it there um we actually want to do the same thing with our header over here but we don't want that um where is it always get lost in here so we want this column layout right but we don't and we want to center it and since we're going to use that center a lot 
in other places, we can actually um, just create that, let that be a standalone element, I mean, let a standalone piece. And what I mean is we're going to go here, right? Let's pull this out because we're going to align a lot of stuff center. Uh, actually, align items. I don't know if it's going to be align items. So I'll leave it for now. And then now we have our forms in there, right? But you see the way these, excuse me, um, look at the way these forms look. They're very nasty. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make them look better. So in order to do that, we're going to have to use the those matte. Um, here we go. Um, look at the. We're going to use the matte input, and what that does is, again, we're first we're using we're going to nest these things in what we call form fields because we need to have a form group for this because um, if you guys remember when we were using Postman when we had our responses and our body and all that stuff when we sent this stuff off in a form that is how we did it so um, what we're going to do is we're going to I'm not going to copy this yet because I want to expand as I go so right now when you use an input you can't you gotta well I'm going to say you can't so um, this is easier to show you than <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the only reason why I want the card is because of the shape. But um, when I look here, I don't even see it. So the card usually gives you a shape where all of this stuff is supposed to be aligned, and you can set the size and all of that stuff on it. And um, I'll go over to the um, I'll go back to the card so you can see what I'm talking about. So when you go to the example here, there's really the only one example, and I think it's a pretty good one. But um, you see here, it looks very simple. But um, when you go over to the S the CSS, and you see it tells you the width of the card, we can literally go ahead and do that, and you'll see how that changes. So um, so for instance, let's go over here, and we're gonna put um, dot, and, I, and I'm just gonna make this um, login card, right? I'm gonna say, yeah, just a keep it all together because if not um you know well this this is just a very description uh, very descriptive right just like with the code you want to be descriptive with your classes and then what i'm going to say is i'm going to say that the width is well, let's use 400 pixels this seems uh okay and i don't have to worry about the height because the height and width will work themselves out to keep things in a, at a certain aspect ratio so if i do this and we still have that background color purple because now as you can see our background color is gone like we don't see a background right we just see the card stuff so now all of that stuff should come together and be pushed to the center so once we once this thing reloads you'll see that everything starts to move closer together and the only thing that's still off is this login And what I really probably should have did was put this column layout a bit higher because now I can just grab here and instead of putting it here, I can probably put it here. And that'll make sure that everything going down is centered. At least it should, right? <laughs> So that's the refresh. So let's try it. Let's see what happens if I put it up here, because all of these things are now nested within it. Um, I want to see if the content itself is still layered centered. Oh yeah, there we go. And then uh, just to keep that same energy, we we still do have to put it here though. We still do have to put it on the content so that we say, hey, moving down, you need to be in a column. <laughs> And now look how e much easier it is to read when you say you know what we're doing. We have a purple container, we have the column layout, and then we have our um, column layout, right? But this background is still not the correct color. So let's go ahead and see why that is, right? Um, so the background actually should be purple. So all, actually all of this is showing the card. I thought I had that thing as 400 pixels. This matte card, right? And we can look over here and see what's going on. 
and um, as of right now, oh, I didn't put the I didn't put the class on it. So, and you can have more than one class in here. So I can also say um, login dash card, and that should put it back to having everything in the middle. And then boom, look at that. So now um, everything's not the way it's supposed to be, but <laughs> we're getting there. So let me just go ahead and take a look at this and figure out why. So I think what I need to do with this is I need to put this in the center as well. So I need to say align self and I want this to be center. And actually, um, before I do that, um, the thing I like about using Chrome or mostly, you know, the browser is that you can go in here and uh, manage that yourself. So we can go here and we could go at the highest level and we can just say align uh, content and let's, we can try to align content center. Doesn't work, right? So we say, okay, what about align self? Center, still not working. We can go align items center. That is not working either. So what if we took this out? And then if I did display, oops, flex, still not liking that. So um, I'm actually interested in seeing why this is the way it is. Because I would have thought that everything would have just been aligned. So now I'm going to grab, I'm going to go a bit higher and I'm going to say, what if we do it here and we say align content center still nothing align items center and it can also it can also have something to do with the way we have it displayed right um, because it's a div it displays as a block element so um, everything is meant is going to be stayed on one line so I want to keep. I want to change the background. Um, so I'm going to say uh, Matt card with background. Um, not centered. And there's some there's some other things that I can do to make it. Um, what you what you would normally do here, right? Is instead you do something like this in order to center something. Uh, you have to go into the onto the thing here. So I'm gonna grab this, and I'm gonna go up here. And I'm gonna move this stuff, and I'm gonna say margin. And what you do is you say zero auto, right? And now it's centered. And that's how you do that, because otherwise you'd have a um. What's the word I'm looking for? Otherwise, I mean, it it just it it automatically says okay, I want zero margin at the top zero margin at the bottom and I want you to automatically adjust the margin on the left and the right sides and um, behind the scenes it just ma it just magically knows how to center your stuff I'm not I said magically knows because I don't know what happens under the hood I just know it works <laughs> um, so yeah that's that's how we're gonna get this but the problem here is that we want this thing to take up the whole screen so what happens if we take this off right oh we still need that but um and then we can actually actually add margin to the top and the bottom so that way we have uh, a little wiggle room so what if we went here we said hey oops nope. so yeah it's got to be zero uh, I forget why but um, so let's say we said uh, 50 yeah so it only works when you have zero auto and um, that's really all we need for that so let's go in here and we're gonna put our margin in here margin zero auto right so we have that and then the next thing we need to do is figure out how to get this thing to take up the whole screen right so uh, what I want to do is we're gonna say um, so we say uh, make CSS fit fit content to pay to screen
because I really want this to take up all the space in there. Set the body. So what if I go over here and do, uh, so what I should, I want to do height 100%. And then if I take this width off, we're going to have a problem. Because now it's going to take off the whole page. So what if I say width 100%? Um, still not liking that because the content in there doesn't make it work. So um, still working on that. But again, you guys see what's going on, how things are working out so far. So uh, and so I am going to keep that width on there as said. Um, and then now what's next is we want to get our image up in here. And the only thing we have to do now, since everything's already set to, um, what's what I'm looking for? Everything's already set to be in place. Only I'm going to do is use image SRC equals. And the way we have it here is that our image is just this white thing. Um, however, I don't think I've shared this anywhere else. So what, what I'm going to do is I need to actually export this so that way I can have it. So I'm going to go up here and export the selected and I'm just going to select, I'm going to export it to the web resources, right? Can't be too careful. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to those web resources and we are going to add that to the directory for our project. So now when I go and grab this, uh, so I can actually get rid of that rectangle. We don't need that. So um, I do need this. Uh, what is this? Yeah, so this is it here. I don't know why it shows up like that, but um, I don't think we'll have a problem with it. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and then I'm going to go over back to our project and then down in the assets is where I'm going to apply it. So I'm going to um, control V. So I'm going to see if I can drag and drop it over here. Boom. So now I'm going to import this thing. So that's fine. Um, let me rename this. I'm going to say logo. Right. And then I'll, I'll add some more um, specifications to it to make it the file more uh, usable. So what I have to do is uh, dot dot slash assets logo dot PNG. And then I can go ahead and close that. And I'm going to save everything. And you're going to see them. They're going to be a bit mashed. Well, probably a little bit more than a bit. But um, everything's going to be stacked on top of each other. And uh, I was going to give this a second to load. And then boom, look at that. And uh, again, like I said before, we want this stuff to have some space around it. So what we're going to do is um, in order to get everything centered just right, I want to make... I forget how to make this thing take up the whole page. Um, what I think I have to do is to go up higher. And when I say up higher, I mean in here. So we're going to inspect this thing. We're going to go on in here. And let's just say we say height 100%. Oh, look at that. And then we go down and say we want the width to be 100%. And as you see, you really don't have to do that. Once you set the height to 100%, you're good to go. So now we got to get this image centered, right? So in order to do that, we're going to say, um, oh, I see what the problem was. We didn't have everything. Um, <laughs> um, so what I think I can do is I might be able to grab this and just put this a little higher now. So now all the elements going down should be aligned or um, like as a comma, as a column. So I'm going to go over here and uh, I'm going to actually import this. Uh, oh, I already have it installed. There's another um, library that I want, though. 
I think I might have to set in, set up the con config for this uh prettier because uh, I want some more stuff going on here and it I'll look into that stuff offline though so I don't uh waste it you guys' time up oh, and screw something up look at the console I right, screw something up here because now I'm not seeing my stuff showing the way I like it. Uh, I see. I had two class tags on that thing, and uh, I only needed one. So we got on this thing column layout. I don't want. Oh, I see. I see. I see. So I can grab this column layout. I'm gonna see what happens if I cut it out. Um, I might need to add that back just because, again, as you saw um, over here, once you have a new kind of group, you gotta add, you gotta apply that same nesting to that as well. And we're seeing it now, so we do have to apply that back. So um, let's go ahead and apply that here. And um, we only need one button, and we actually don't want this button aligned um, like everything else. So, but I do want this stuff in line, so we can always change that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, this button's going to be log in. And then, uh, the primary color, uh, oops, primary color should be, um, different. So what I should be able to do is, um, as you guys see over, let's see. Let's see if I can find a input field with the button on it. Actually, let me go here to button. That's what I want. And I'm just gonna go over the examples. Reason being is I wanna see this blue color should be the primary color. And I just wanna see the way they have that set up. And the only thing that is the color equals primary. And the primary color for my stuff should be, um, should be that purple, I believe color equals primary and let's see what we get all right I'm still not liking that but um, progress right uh, didn't add the column layout back to the class oh yeah I did oh it's outside of the uh -huh. And at this point, the only thing we're doing we're, is it's HTML. We haven't even done anything um, real Angular. I mean, these elements we could we could have created our own. Um, that's the only piece of Angular that we're really using right now. And then, um, you know, we we can always have that in there. And I just want to see how I have. So I'm always going to be referring back to design as I go. So now you see our buttons are looking in the um, little, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the buttons are corny, right? I mean, I mean not the buttons, but the I, the inputs. They don't really look nice. This looks big. It doesn't take up a lot of space. So now we're going to go back over here. We know for this purple container, we want uh, height to be 100%. So let's go ahead and do that. Right? Um, we know we want the we want some space between our image and our well we be, because as you see now the image touch r touches right at the top it touches right at the bottom here uh, we don't really want that so uh, I'm, I'm going to show you what I mean so I'm going to go back over here and I'll, I'll do all the changes here and then we can fix these um, fix these once we get back into the code. So let me get on this login component, purple, here we go. So we're gonna put this back at height, 100%, boom. And then now we need to drop down some and now we need to say, hey, on this image, we're gonna add something called padding. And the padding is gonna give you space above or below. And in this case, we're gonna say, um, let's do 20 pixels, right? boom and then we're going to just do zero so with that when you do that it adds padding as you can see here on the top and the bottom and then um 
you know, doesn't do anything on the left and right, which is perfect. So that's all we needed there. And then now we're going to set up this card to say, hey, you only need 400 pixels. They already got that. And what they did was they filled the rest with some margin to put that in place. Um, the matte card gave us some padding around the uh, insides of the bo uh, of this box here. But um, we need to put some space in between these things too. So we can always, we can just drop this down and get right onto the elements that we want. And uh, login as it is right now is, is fine. But these things also need some padding. So what I'm going to do is I really only, we don't really only need to put padding on one of these because if we put it on both, then it doesn't really do, um, you know, you add padding to other places, but you don't really need it. So we can just keep going down, grab this input here. And then we're going to say margin top. Let's just put, let's see what happens if you put 10, right? And what, when you do margin, it doesn't give you extra space. It takes away from the existing space, as you can see. Oh, is that the wrong input? Yeah. Nope. So, but you see here, it did top, right? Margin top. And you see how that affected it. So what if you go here and we say margin top. So, and this is working within the space that already exists. And then we just change this from zero to 10 pixels. You see that now we're getting some space between it and we don't make the, we don't make this any bigger. And I'm just gonna put my finger right here. Oh, you guys can't see that. Oh yeah, we did make the space bigger. Yeah, I lied, but that's fine. Uh, if we did padding, I believe then padding top that preserves this up. Uh, nope. So padding gives you extra space margin. I would have thought would have taken away. And then if you do negative, I mean you can't do negative padding, but you could do negative margin. All right, so um, got to figure out how I want to do that. But I believe we can just put some padding in between it and you know call it a day. So we can always go here and do padding bottom, right? You can do padding. Um, what do you want to want to do? Padding bottom. Or I guess margin bottom. Because padding adds space. Margin. Uh, margin bottom. There we go. So that's how we get our space. And as you see here, margin takes away, padding adds to it. And if you think about it, you know, if you have something here and you add padding to it, 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 it adds to it. When you do margin, you're like, hey, take away that space. So now we, we but it adds some spaces. Hey, I want you to have some space between these things. So there we go. And, um, you know, if you look at the design, it, we have a lot more padding. Uh, margin on the bottom than we did on the top we could so we can keep this 20 and this is all um, relative right so you know we can go back to our um, where's this here we can go back to our image and instead of having that 20 pixels all around we can just say hey padding top is going to be 20 pixels and then we're going to say hey the padding on the bottom is going to be twice that and then we can say 40 pixels and then look at that you have so much more space or you know since this you know whatever the center is for this um we can do that and then you make sure that these things are spaced out so you see the padding is showing between the bottom and the top and uh like i said you have you have free, free reign on this and um, you see the way these input boxes look. They don't really look that nice. So uh, what we're going to do is let's let's start with what we had, right? So let's work with our image. And let's say um, we'll do dot uh, logo. And that's really all we need. And then we're just going to put that padding top on here. And that was 20 pixels. And then we're going to do that padding bottom and that's 40 pixels and i'm using pixels um I, i've read some you know documentation well not documentation i read some blogs and um some people 
don't really like using pixels and they say you should use other stuff um i mean to be honest i i haven't read enough into you know the different css stuff in terms of design so i'm not really that familiar with the different uh the different use cases how to use it um to the most efficient way but again i mean if you're designing one way and you're keeping in mind that your your code is well that your um your stuff is going to have to work on a lot of different screen sizes what you can do is create me media uh, queries so that way you can account for those different sizes and um, as long as you're being diligent in that you're you should be good to go um, because I mean you it's I'm not saying you can't but uh, and if you if you do a really good job of implementing those media queries you shouldn't have any problems so um, I forgot that we need to add our fixer here so let's go and while we're, while we're at this let's go and look at something so we can't actually work with these um, we won't be able to play around with this in the terminal not in the terminal but in the uh, wait. Uh, sorry um, but yeah you, you can't really test these because these aren't like HTML CSS stuff so when you try to do this stuff in the browser it won't know what you're doing um, but and we're since we're, we're not even doing code on um, buttons I'm sorry we're supposed to be at input so let me go up to input and um, you see here these are like basic inputs but you can make your input look so much neater and what I mean is um, as you saw here um, in the design our inputs look really nice they have that circular shape they have you know that default um, placeholder stuff and you know we want that so what we can do is we can use something called um, on the mat input itself when we put in um, and the only and the way we do it is we just go ahead and grab mat input and uh, we'll have to do some uh, some other things with this but um, you know we're gonna start one thing at a time and I believe there is a um, another uh, what's the word I'm looking for another way we can have this thing set up but in order to do that we have to use um, this form field thing um, you know we have like hints that we can use we have all of this stuff that we can add in here and the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to Tech, uh, I'm looking for um, there's a another they call directive or property on this mat input that we can use to change the way the style of the input looks and that's what I'm looking for so uh, just give me a second to find that so it should have been at the top though if I remember correctly so what I'm looking for is the space around it. So if I remember correctly, so like you have like the suffix, right? Um, I have an order project that I'm going to look at because I can't see what I'm looking for. Um, so I'm going to go and look at an, an order project. And first, let me just look in here. So programming full stack weather app and then down in weather display src app let's look at the location search so this is what i'm looking for so i and i'll show you guys what this looks like and this is actually a project that i have live right now but um oh geez uh no <laughs> okay i forgot that i didn't i don't have the actual code uh, I, wonder if, I wonder if this thing still remembers. Oh, yeah, look at that. So I wonder if this is still running on Heroku. It's been a while since I've actually checked it out. But, um, you know, that's not what we're doing. Let's go to... I really Oh, here we go. So this is what I want. So you see this um, input is nice and round and shaped properly. And yeah, this is the project. This isn't probably this isn't the final design for it, 
I haven't gotten around to doing the redesign, but this is what it is as, as it stands now. Um, where is, uh, um, what was I looking for? I forgot. Oh yeah, I wanted to look down in VS Code and check out this code so I can get that because I don't see it. I think it's appearance is what it is. It's a property called in appearance and they have different things for it so i should be able to just control v uh, up here in angular so let's go here control not control v, control f uh might be able to do it here control f appearance nope appearance still not giving it to me so yeah, uh, I'll go check the old code. And close all of these. Word, current weather, forecast, location search. There we go. Huh. So it is just the mat icon that does it. I'm almost certain I used uh, something else up in here. So that's what I used. So I think it's because I used this. Uh, nope, can't even say that because the mat input might. So the mat input alone might actually do that for us. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see, uh, we go mat input appearance. I know I'm not crazy. So there we go. So now you see the, so I, I guess we do have to use the form field. So this is what I was looking for. So it does have to be on the form field. <clears throat> and that's actually where we're getting to. So um, each of these is going to be a in the form field, these inputs here. And um, I want to nest these. So I'm going to do mat form field. All right. Drop this label up in there. And then um, actually, since these are the same thing, I'm just going to write it once and then copy it. So now that we have that, we're going to do a something called a uh, mat label. So we do mat label. Actually, I don't think I have any labels on the design. Yeah, no labels. So just placeholders. And uh, we can see all of that over here. So placeholder, right? You, we go back and look at the code. This one says legacy form field, right? You see that there. Fill form field, and you see the place order text right there. Right, fill form field. Oh, so we can just use the label, and we don't have to worry about the placeholders after all. So um, the mat label here is just going to be um, email, right? It's just an email. And um, the next part is the, so let me just go to the mat form field uh, stuff. Oh yeah, right here. So what we do have to do is we're going to set that appearance and that appearance is going to be outline. So let's go mat form field appearance equals outline and then I wonder if it's outlined or outlined with the D on the end yep, outline and that's really all we need for right now um, I am in the wrong code base I think I'll just close that out and then um, down in yeah I think that's all we need for right now so I'm not going to do anything with the placeholder. Uh, I could, but I don't think I need it because we can, I mean, if you do this, right, we just say, uh, we say, uh, you know, name at 
example dot com right if you wanted to say hey this is what your email format should be like but everybody should know what an email it, you know looks like how it's supposed to be but you know you can add that if you want to and then um, I, I said username and email but I just use email so I'm not gonna change that and then we can do the same thing I'm just gonna copy this and this is going to be the um, password so we've got that right and then the next thing that we're going to do is I want to actually set up this stuff with the colors um, I'm just not sure <laughs> how um, we've get we've we've gotten it set because um, let's see when we when we imported our stuff from angular and we did the whole um, I'm trying to f I'm sorry I get my words right um, when we imported the material stuff we set the theme but for some reason we don't see the theme um, over here so I mean I, I see it here but I don't see it anywhere else so I want to see how they got that stuff set and uh, on their buttons they don't have any colors in here if you look at the TS uh, you know no colors but when you go into the HTML and you see the color it's it's set to primary and uh, I'm not still I'm, st I'm still not too sure on how this goes so what I want to do is figure out how to get that going um, so let me go angular theme color not working what's more the colors they're not displaying oh I, oh okay so this is what we got I gotta get this uh so let me go ahead and just add the imports that I need because we're gonna need quite a few we're gonna need um, a few modules so we're gonna need the we got the mat cart module we're gonna need mat input module we're gonna need the uh, mat button module we're gonna need the mat um, form well I think that's a do I need a mat form field module or mat form module no it's not form field but I don't remember what it's called so let's go into the form field and let's go to and there's one thing that I can do is I can um, create a module for all of the uh, material stuff and just have that be its own thing and then I'll get the module here Matt form field module okay yeah so that's exactly what it is um, cool and I'm trying to think of what else I need let's look at the HTML so got the card module input well you need this mat input module we got the mat form field module and uh, I think that's all we need for right now so this is all going to be the same way we're just going to do um, import um, mat oh there we go button module from at angular material slash input oh it's this supposed to be button so I'm going to copy this because I'm going to need it button and then we're going to do import Mat input module from mat input. We do import mat uh, 
form field module and I'll just pick this to say form field and uh, that's pull everything in and uh, let me go ahead and save that as well and then let this thing rebuild and you'll see it looks a lot uh, better still not complete but it's gonna look better so now it looks a lot more like what we designed so now our button as you can see it doesn't have the appearance oh wait and then you see the button has the background color that we were looking for and it's not too far off from what uh, we set and um, when we go down I wonder if there's well I'm not gonna say I wonder I wanna I don't I'm not sure where our themes are I think it's in this package JSON where um, actually no I think it's in package lock JSON where our themes are set and actually if we go over to the github stuff and look at the most recent changes we can probably see some of the stuff that was added for those changes um, where is it huh so maybe not. I mean, I know the I know it got set somewhere. I just don't know where. Because if I can find those themes, I can um we can modify it and make sure that the color matches. But um as you can see here, we already see that it uh, it at least works, right? So, um and now look at I mean, look at this. I mean, this is practically what we had um when we did our design. So, and you see how fast? I mean, it takes a while, but I mean, it, it's still relatively fast when you um, think about, you know, what we have here. And this isn't even the full thing, right? We haven't make it done. We haven't allowed it to do anything. And you can see here when you click on it, you see the placeholder text that we created. And we just have to fix this, right? Of course. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've, we've gotten quite a bit of functionality there and just a few things. And you can see that there's not really a lot to this but well I guess considering you know depending on what your perspective of a lot is but um, we you know our, our stuff is looking pretty good um, you look at our you know sign in button we can always fix that so let's go and fix this button really quick and uh, I want to fix this so you see here like basic it's just this right and we can change the button to make it look a certain way and all of the buttons, even though you can't tell too much in the design, have a slight raise with them, which at least that was try the effect that I was trying to give them. So what I'm going to do is on here, I should instead of matte button, I believe it's matte raised button is what I'm going to be using. Um, so in the best way to do this is to go here. Right. And then I can just say matte raised button right there. So we can just grab that. And it's the same, like I said, it uses the same stuff, but this lets us get a lot more, like I said, customization out of it. And we don't have to write all the code to create that button because um, if you've ever, you know, done pure CSS stuff, you know how tedious it could be to get this stuff going in. And now look at this. We got our button going and it looks pretty good. And so then our code is start, our stuff is starting to come along well. Um, I guess one thing that you might, you know, you might not like the size of these, um, boxes for the inputs, um, you know, but they're relatively, they're, I mean, they're okay. Um, I'm thinking like if I had this stuff to, if I had to render this stuff on the phone, uh, and you can always see, and we can look at, see how this stuff would look, right? So you can change your screen size and see, and this is where media queries start to come into play. Um, as your screen size gets smaller, you might want to adjust it. But as you can see, we don't really have to do anything to our um, our card here because it's already so small. So um, when we do our um, media query, we probably really only have to change the size of our icon. So that gives us a lot of, uh, like I said, a lot of room to play. And uh, this icon, this login button, I mean, usually when you look at stuff like this, they're usually off to the side a bit. And uh, I'll show you an example. Um, was it? Uh, I think Instagram. You know, why not use Instagram? Hopefully, I'm not logged in. Um, not that I have anything to hide, but I want to see that login page. So um, when you look here, you'll see 
I think that their login button is a little to the right. So let's go and log out. Um, if this thing responds, let's just see. Uh, what if it happens to say uh, sign out? All right, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm, I'll do it for my phone and try to show you because this is uh taking a bit too long. So I go Instagram.com. Um, I guess mobile's different. Genius. Um, let's go Instagram.com. Let's see if I can log out. All right. So it's taking me back. I'm trying to figure out how to work this thing. So I guess I was clicking the wrong thing. Because I don't see a button for logging out. So if I hit home, we go here. If I hit this button, they're all taking the same place. All of these other buttons are working, but uh, for some reason it's not working. Um, but that's fine. So I'm just going to go um, Pinterest. And uh, see what that show. All right. So when you go and see some login screens, um, on the, was it, yeah, so this is kind of the ones I was talking about here. It's slightly off to the side just to give it a little bit of more um, flavor, I guess. And I mean, if you have a really big button, you can stretch it out like that. Um, I can, I just didn't want to do too much with it when I designed it, so I, I kept it pretty simple. But feel free to change it. Um, I'm going to leave it like this. And then what I really want to do is I want to put it over here. So what I'm going to do is, and just to make sure that this is what I'm doing, I'm going to inspect this. I'm going to click this little thing here because I can just hover over the button, but it's already selected. So I don't have to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this stuff off. And um, well, it's already apl automatically applied apparently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here. And I want to say align self. Uh, and I want to do flex end. Oh, that didn't work. Let's do content align items flex end. Well, it's not display flexed, so I need to adjust this. I need to say, um, Mm, let's say align oh content what about content align align content uh, flex in so this is really um, flex box stuff um, let's just see uh, right alignment CSS right that's what we want all we want is the right alignment so that's for center. If we want a right alignment, I don't. Um, I forget what the float property does. So let's try that. Let's go over here and do float uh, right. Let's just we just go here and we say float. They all float. And we're gonna say. I want you to float to the right, and I don't think this is working. Float uh, right, and then uncheck these. So yeah, it's, that's still not getting it. And it's probably because of the alignment that we uh, gave it from its parent. And when I say parent, I mean all the way up here. Because um, this stuff inherits everything that's given to it. So, oh wait, so I know what to do. Um, I need to say align 
Align self should have done it then. Align self um, should have fixed that because um, what happens is when you're passing down all of these inheritance, you can change. And what I mean is um, when we go over here, right, and we set up this column layout, we already said that, that everything's going to be displayed a certain way and it has to be aligned a certain way. Everything's aligned to the center. And um, when we go over here and we look, we say, okay, align everything to the center. So this is, whole content is aligned to the center. All of this is aligned to the center. All of this is aligned centered. However, we want this to be aligned slightly different. So I think when I was applying all of the stuff, I needed to apply it here. And now if I say align content, uh, flex end we should start to see some different behavior once I figure it out let's say end um, so this might take me a second to figure out but um, let me see align self but it's definitely one of these oh there we go start I guess then well flex in so yeah so that's how we do it you you put a line self on there because uh initially we we're like oh hey we're gonna align everything centered and i like no no you are gonna be aligned a little differently right and then um as you see here these are all the values that we can have for this thing so um we can set it here but that's a little too far right we want this thing contained right in here so I'm trying to see if I can align this thing relative to this. Um, CSS align relative to another element. And this is really what I do for CSS because I have no idea um, how to um, how to do these things sometimes. I mean, it's just, a, it's a lot, you know, when you think about it. So, I want to position 400 of elements running to add rectangle there. I want to start 400 as, as corners. Um, so, what I can do is position absolute will position the element by coordinates relative to the closest position ancestor, closest parent, which isn't position static. Have your four divs nested inside the target div. Give the target div position relative. I'm sorry, I'm gonna try to get something out of my pocket because it's making me sit at an angle which is putting pressure on my back and hip. So, so this is what we can do. I mean, I really didn't, um, I'm not gonna say I didn't want to do this, but um, I try to keep things as pure if that makes sense, using the libraries provided, but um, that's not working. So I can still do the align self, and uh, I think it was, uh, there we go, flex end, right? So now we have this here. So now what I want to do is I want to say, hey, the position is going to be not absolute. Uh, doesn't matter, we can keep it relative. And then the only thing I want to do, I want to say, hey, I want you to come back to the left a little bit. Oh, I guess it's right. Right. And I want to say, hey, I want you to come to the right about eh, 60 pixels. Nope. 120 pixels. So we say, hey, left or right because we're all setting it to the right now. And they were saying, hey, you're gonna come 120 pixels to the right. Oh, too many. So now let's try 100. That's close. And at this point we're eyeballing. Um, you know, if we do 90, you're like, oh, okay, you're kind of there, you're kind of not. But if we go, you know, 105, you know, we're, we're pretty much right here, and I'm literally going to take a piece of paper, line this thing up, 
and be like, nope, nope, that's too much. So now I'm going to go 95. Eh, and I'm just trying 97. 98, 99, and that seems to be about the sweet spot there. All right, cool. So 99 pixels to the right, and there we go. So I'm actually going to copy all of this stuff that we just created right here, and then I'm going to go down in here, and now I'm going to say, um, you know, button dot login dash button, and we're going to give it these styles. And now we have our stuff, and I'm going to give this thing an ID equals login button login right so now when I save all of this stuff it's there by default boom look at that oh, maybe not oh I never added it to the HTML oh yeah I did but I didn't oh, I didn't add the class yeah so class equals login dash button and that's why um, the reason why you see how many times I go I save something and go and check it out and that's the reason why I um, oh that's interesting that's the reason well I was gonna say the reason why I <laughs> um, change some uh, I lost my train of thought I was not expecting that to happen um, but that's the reason why um, with this the fact that we keep loading and changing and checking is the reason why I ran our server over here because I wanted to have our terminal in this workspace open to do stuff in case I missed something needed to add something and um, wanted to have another way to do that without having to keep jumping around so uh, I'm just gonna go back on this button and figure out what uh cause this because I wasn't expecting that and I oh here we go so I think I put this down too low I think this was supposed to go up higher on um, the card actions because I forgot the parent um, this is already once we get here it's already too late we need to add it higher so there we go and that still looks off to me. I'm sorry. Um, well, I'm not really sorry because I'm very particular about this stuff. Um, it seems like, oh, my paper must have been crooked the first time because this ain't cutting it. So let's see how many, how much more we got to go. So I'm going to just grab the button element again. I actually need to go up here and uh, let these trials go commence. So 101, eh, not quite. Let's go to a hundred and three getting closer let's go to 105 again 106 108 110 ha ha There we go. So I think the sweet spot is going to be 109. That's as close as we're going to be able to get. And uh, that actually looks pretty nice. So now we got this thing aligned properly. So I'm going to just go down in here and uh, just make this 109. And boom, look at that. So this is our login page. And the only thing I want to do after this 
is create our footer and our footer was just this text that we had um, oh. so now we look we literally have our design and then we just want this we want this text at the bottom so I'm just gonna copy that text and I'm gonna go back over here and I'm just gonna say um, I don't want this to be I want this to be I'm gonna just make it a span and span is just a way for you to create um, actually I'll make it a div because div creates block elements span is just gonna wrap this around whatever it is div is gonna let me easily make it centered and um, Yeah, so and since I'm using this twice, I'm just going to put, uh, I'm just going to create a class called center. And uh, I'm going to copy that in there. But before that, I'm going to just, actually, no, I'm going to use a span. And the reason being is because I have text going in here. And uh, I want to make sure that, because with a span, I can just paste my text in there as raw text. Uh, I thought so, anyway. Um, design. There we go. Control C and paste that right up in there. And then here we're gonna say class equals um, login footer. And I'm being very specific with these because um, if I start to notice I have overlapping class names, that'll help me remember which ones I need to move. And actually, no, I don't have to do this at all because we already um, we already have this thing being centered automatically, even though it's not um, because we because of this, everything's going to be centered. And um, I want to put some padding in this thing, though. So I want to say uh, dot login footer. And I think I need about how many, relatively speaking, right? Uh, if we go back up in here and we say, hey, we want this thing right down here. So if this is only 40 pixels, this is probably gonna be about 200, maybe even 300 pixels. Um, sounds extreme, right? So what we can do is we can just go position um absolute right and then we're going to set it from the bottom i believe and then i can just say we want to be 20 pixels from the bottom and see what happens cuz i'm not sure what's going to happen So this is all a guess. Oh, look at that, perfect, right? 20 pixels from the bottom, boom. So that just saves me from putting in something like extremely weird, like, hey, let's go 20% from the bottom or, you know, 20, let's something insane. And I can just literally do that. So um, now what I wanna do is put in, make sure the color is white. And I can just type in white. I believe that's the color here. Yep, color's white. And uh, that's really it. So when we go back and look over here, look at that, we got nice white color. Um, one thing I need to set here is the font because we don't have it set just yet. Um, when we go over into our um, design here, I believe the font is Source Serif Pro. So let's try to get that in here. Um, and actually, I want to do and say, um, oh, all right. So Chrome browser. So we want a Angular. I don't. I don't think this is an Angular thing. Let me say uh, HTML source serif pro font.
uh, let's see, source, serif pro font in HTML. So now I gotta figure out how I can use this font in my project. Um, import font HTML. That's all we need. So adding a unique font to your website. Cool, cool, cool. Upload your .tv to the web font generator. Typically, this could work. Uh, uh, Adobe font HTML. Here we go. So that didn't work. Using web fonts and HTML or news newsletters. So I wonder um, how I can get, get these fonts coming into. So this one loads. Um, so here it is here. To follow the web font tutorial to choose the fonts you want to create your project. To find the embed code for your project, you see the web projects page, look at the project name. And we actually import these. Um, we're going to import these in that index.html file. And uh, one second, this chair sucks. So choose your fonts. So I already, I already chose my font. I guess I have to create a web project and then grab that thing. So let me try that. Uh, I want to just duplicate. I'm going to um, Adobe Fonts. Adobe Fonts. Since I already have Creative Cloud, um, I should be able to grab this stuff and drop it in for my project. So I'm not sure if they're going to make me, um, I'm not sure how this works. So. And why is my internet so weird? Uh, I was going to mess around with the connection, but um, I don't want you guys to suffer in the process. So I don't know, I'm trying a new browser. Um, Adobe fonts. All right, cool. So I'm signing into Adobe. So just give me one second. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. I didn't know that would happen. Yeah. So what I want to do is, I'm gonna just pull this over here so you guys can see. Um, white projects, let's do this. Um, ready to start, find a front new line, use the button to create a white project, cool. And we already know this one is gonna be Sans Serif Pro. Sans Serif Pro. At least that's what I'm seeing in uh, this project here. Oh, source serif pro. Source serif pro. So it's just the whole thing. It's the family. So it looks like, you know, you haven't. Okay. So we're looking for the source serif pro. And um, let's just hit this, right? Get beautiful type on the web. Web forms are suitable for client science. Your language will. So, uh, do simplify the steps. We want all 
of those. So let's see. You know, originally do William and all, right? Name same name as the website. Boom, and we want all of them. So we're gonna hit create. And uh, I think I can just grab this thing. If you'd like to use fonts in the EM, it's gonna sit done. And then the way we get them will be here. So this is how they're getting the Roboto, and this is how they're getting other stuff. So um, this index.html is what pulls stuff in and makes it used, uh, makes it available for use in other places. So now we have the font. Um, not too sure how it works, but um, we do have it. So what I want to do is, so now it tells you what to do. Um, you create the project. And um, I guess this is how you're supposed to refer to it. Copy the embed code, add it to the head in your website. Um, to add more fonts to the project, um, customize your web project. So if you only use certain ones, apply the fonts in your CSS. So um, use these font family names in your CSS. So, hmm. is it? So I'm just gonna go back to my personal web project, I guess. So I should have one somewhere. Favorites, web projects. Huh, thought I had one in here. Could have sworn I just did. Okay, so let's do source. Serif again. Source serif. And then um, we're going to hit that add to web project thing again. So that's already there. Um, that's weird. Um, I wonder how you can view your web projects. My W fonts, I guess, right? And then web projects. I wonder if there's a way I can, oh, there we go. Um, I just want to figure out how you actually use the font once you get embedded. Um, so you got all that, you got this. So we got the code there. Click done to close the web prep and continue browsing to add more parts of the project. And then I think I should just be able to go and say source serif pro. So I'm just going to try that in the, um, this should be, um, source. Uh, since it's two words, I think I need to use, uh, I'm like this, uh, source serif pro and then add the comma there. Because if I go back to the web and check the web project, it should show me, oh gosh. I don't know why they, this is so tedious. It's probably because I'm using the back, so the caching is the same. So now if I go to it, it should be there. Okay, here we go. So go down it doesn't tell you exactly how to use this thing but I think I just have to do this right here so I can click on that and see it there but I don't want to do that I want to see how I can oh gosh. all right eventually I'm, I'm gonna learn to stop doing that <laughs> um so web projects and I think it's because it was okay there we go so let's go to edit web project and now when I do this, I think 
Um, okay, so now when I go to font style, the oh, so I have to apply different font weights. So in this particular case, I can just copy it. So when I go down into the um, what is this? Into the design, I go here and I see the source serif pro. It's regular and it's font size 24. I can be that specific with it, or I can just leave it the way it is and say, hey, fonts family is going to be default source serif pro. And then from there, the um, what is it? Um, regular, right? So what I want to well, actually let's just go ahead and save this first and see if this even gets pulled in. So let's take a look at the font right now and then wait for the page to reload and see if it changes. And it did. So look at that. The font is a lot better and we didn't even have to do anything. So now what we want to do is we want to go onto this font over in the in over here and we're going to say um, font weight I believe it was 400 pix uh, pixels and then we can easily just copy the CSS for it right here so they Adobe does make it pretty easy for you you could literally go over here and say oh it's regular okay cool I'm just going to copy the CSS and then go back to the code and just paste it and see what happens so boom look at that font style normal font weight 400 font family source serif pro and uh, I guess the serif is like the backup so it specifies a prior choice list of family font names or generic family names a user agent iterates through the list of family names until it matches an available font that contains a glyph for the character to be rendered so that's all we had to do and um, I don't want to do this everywhere so um, I'm just gonna take that out and um, we're good to go so in this index HTML we can always have serif as a backup but I believe that's already in here somewhere so I'm just going to save that um, and we'll see what happens. And boom, we still got it going. The font is a little thicker and it looks nice. Same here. I didn't really think about how I want the font in here to look, but it's going to treat this the same no matter what. So when somebody's typing, you know, we don't we don't really want it to be fancy anyway. So I can hey, you know, you can type in here now. However, this doesn't actually do anything just yet. So what we what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to do something called oh we're gonna have to create um for our form for, we're gonna create our form and then on top of that we're gonna have to do some things down in here. So I'll let you guys go for now because I, I can see myself going all night with this because uh, this is one of my favorite parts of the development like I said when I first started because it's such it, it's such an instant gratification you type something you see something right so we'll continue on with this tomorrow and um, we'll start getting everything wired up and what I mean by wired up is we're gonna have all this stuff connected so that way we can get it all together so that we can actually send stuff to our database interact with it and um, you know we'll, we'll have some fun there and I'm also going to touch over something called course and it's capital C O R S and it's cross origin request I think uh, I forget what the S stands for um, but that's a popular a common issue that developers will face when you're doing um, development when you're in your, de in your development phase and you're not actually using your production servers because your back end and your front end will be on two different servers and they're on two different ports and because of that they're not able to communicate directly and if you try to send a request to your back end um, you'll see you'll, you'll notice you're gonna have a lot of errors so um, I'll go over that tomorrow when we get to that point either tomorrow or Wednesday and um, all I want to say is 